<clears throat> Thanks. Um, so I've been a resident just um, I've been a resident for about 20 years in uh, New Mexico, but uh, mainly lived in Santa Fe. Uh, I'm an application developer for the New Mexico Department of Game Fish. Uh, we sell hunting and fishing licenses um, to anybody who wants one. Uh, my agency has four public-facing websites that are PHP-driven. Uh, two are WordPress, our main public site, Wildlife. Uh, these two are WordPress. And then the other two, um, the ones we do the heavy lifting, uh, the e-commerce and, and sell licenses, are uh, two PHP sites that are in the Zen framework, um, which is an MVC. Um, so we're a fully lamp-stacked environment. Um, I work in a small team. Um, we try to follow agile processes. Um, and I mainly work on the uh, the MVC site, um, although I do help out with the WordPress site. Is that why that site is on the online, on this site, it won't go right back over to the general site? What are you talking about? Well, obviously I'm on the site. I yeah. use it a lot. Uh -huh. And so when you're on the online sales site, yeah. Yeah, yeah they're two, two separate sites, okay. basically. Yeah. Um, today my talk is the uh, uh, PHP integrated development environment. I'm sure a lot of you are using one. Um, let's put. Um, so I'm I'm going to talk about uh, the ones that run in your on your development platform uh, as a client. I'm not going to talk about any cloud solutions today, like Cloud Nine. Um, the three ones I'm going to talk about are Zen Studio, PHP Storm, and, and Dreamweaver. I'm going to include Dreamweaver just in case we've got some design people here today. Um, so IDE, IDEs are designed to maximize program and productivity by providing a tight knit component with similar user interfaces. Um, IDEs are supposed to present a single program in which all your development is done, um, which is not always true. Uh, we, we use um, several programs, but the IDE is the big one. Uh, these are software that runs in your development environment, pricing, provides a set of tools to the program. Um, shopping for an IDE, um, it, if you are shopping for an IDE, um, good place to start is uh, probably uh, Wikipedia. Um, it's organized by language. We're interested in the PHP. Um, being a wiki site, it's not always up to date, but it is sort of a list the main ones. Um, so Zen Studio is down here, PHP Storm is there. Although well, these are not correct, but what it does is give you a good listing of the capabilities, um, what they think, autocomplete, debugger, refactoring support, and then version control. This is another good, um, this is a good article I ran across. Um, I agree with everything this article says, um, even with its conclusions that probably the best one is PHP Storm. Um, some of you may not agree. Um, it's a debatable subject. Things are always changing in the uh, integrated development environment world. Um, so those are the things I'm gonna show today. Uh, core features. So uh, you may agree with me, you may not. Um, I didn't include everything in the boat, but um, obviously a source con uh, source code editor, and and I kind of lump a lot of things in that. When I go through the demo, you'll see what I mean um, by a source code editor. It's more than just um, getting to your PHP and editing your text. It also includes a project view or um, and several other views are trying to not say windows, but they're perspectives basically. When you open your IDE, you have project view, you have your editor, you have some tools like search and errors and stuff like that. Uh, code completion, um, that's a broad subject. Um, a refactoring support, um, and what I mean by that is when, when you do refactor, which, you know, a simple explanation of refactoring is just making your code better, um, organizing it, that when you do, like, 
change a class name or a file name. Um, you have some automated support so that you're not breaking things, so that you can run a little function to check that you're not breaking things. Uh, debugging, um, most of you guys know what a debugger is. Um, programmers tend to hate the debugger. <laughs> uh, a lot of programmers are still doing, um, you know, inserting die statements and, and try and catch statements. And that's how they debug their code. Um, version control or source control is a biggie. That's a big benefit for using an IDE. Um, a, lot, um, a lot of programmers are still at command line, um, entering, uh, you know, pulls and commits um, at command line instead of using the features that are in an IDE, which make it GUI friendly. Uh, you'll notice that can, a lacking is build automation. I think if I was talking about Java, I'd be talking about build automation because um, PHP is an interpreted language. We don't have to worry about creating binary files from our IDE. Um, browser view. And embed, uh, I'm not talking about an object browser view. I'm just talking about an internet browser within the IDE. Dreamweaver has one. It works pretty well in Dreamweaver. But um, I don't think it's necessary for an IDE, so I'm not going to really go over it. Um, database integration. Um, I think most people are using like PHP admin or Workbench or something else, another program, in order to get to their um, relational tables. Uh, Built-in FTP, SDP support. Um, Dreamweaver has this. I don't think it's necessary. We live in a version control world now. So um, that really handles the need to have a FTP client in your, uh, in your ID. Source control editor. Oh, here's the demo. Okay, I'm going to open Zen Studio first. Okay, so this is what I mean by uh, more than just a code editor. I mean, here's your code editor. This is what, you know, you bring up your files, you get to your PHP and you make changes and immediately makes it, it probably in your hosting environment, um, your local hosting environment. But also you have um, strong project views. Sorry for the display. These are all separate websites, separate applications. Um, some of them are dependent on one another, some of them aren't. Um, but that's kind of a feature in a modern IDE as opposed to a text editor. Um, and then you have these resources down here. So you can have these different views while you're doing things. And then you have a top menu with even more um, tools while you're developing. Um, so it handle like dependency management between projects? Um, yes. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So, um, so I'm going to just open up Dreamweaver for the heck of it, just because in case we have uh, some Dreamweaver people in here. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, I don't. Please don't go there. Uh, this is not working the way I want it to work. Let me just close this. Oh, no. It's because I'm not. Uh, It's going to be a bummer if I can't. Do I have a little bar over here? Ah. It's going to be one right here. Let me just see if I can close everything and hope that makes it. Oh, can show. Let me just do that. There we go. Okay. So there's Dreamweaver. Um, there's your code. Believe it or not, G, uh, you can edit PHP and Dreamweaver. Um, you have the same syntax highlighting. Um, so this is what I mean by uh, browser view, which is not always great. Um, I don't like it when the browser is embedded in, in the IDE because uh, you should be able to just locally host anything and, and go straight to your browser to see what you're working on. Um, this is, this right here is uh, 
Dreamweaver's um, FTP client. So I'm looking at the server right now. Um, it's kind of a nice feature, so you can just push things up to the server. Um, and Dreamweaver does have um, some some capabilities when it comes to um, uh, version control. So let me go back to um, here. Okay. Um, so syntax highlighting is a is a common feature. So I mean, a lot of you are familiar with this stuff, but I'm just going to go over it anyway. Um, so you know, basically, a modern IDE has a built-in interpreter that is actually looking at your code and kind of tagging. You know, what sees a class, it puts it in blue. Um, that sort of thing. It functions in red. So this is this. This is what they call Dracula, I guess, in PHP, as far as a, as a design view, as far as a set of colors. Um, let's see. Um, code collapsing. All familiar with that. The ability in really big um, PHP documents to, to collapse the code. Um, Zen Studio has this feature this link feature right here, so if you jump around um, from page to page, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, in one project or another, it'll actually lead you directly to where it is. Some people don't like that, but you turn it off. And so, you know, with the top menu features, um, you have the ability to form a search. You know, search within um, an IDE is important. Um, you should have a search which likes to let you do regular question searches too, in case you want to find all your uh, correct email addresses, stuff like that. Um, this search allows you to search the whole workspace. So if you're looking for something, you know, a lot of times searches will kind of save you when you don't know what you're doing and you just have a snippet um, and you need to get to, to whatever you're looking for. So basically, right now, I'm sort of looking through all of my projects. It's pretty fast when you consider it. I am just looking for PHP or PHTML files. And so the results page right here, you know, basically will will let you see. So, We'll let you see every instance of, you know, my key string was error handler. And so it'll basically allow me to see a small snippet of it so I can look for what I'm, you know, try to find what I'm looking for. When I find it, I can just open up the file right from there. So that's a nice aspect of the search feature. Um, code completion. Um, uh, I don't know, it's hard to So code completion. So I'm just going to go ahead and start writing something. Uh, I'm going to do a function. 
uh, you see how it you know pops out and basically writes the code for you. Um, when I get here, I'm going to do a little bracket. Don't let me close it. And you'll notice that already, you know, when you're going along, if, if, if I'm not doing things right, um, it'll start erroring on me. Basically, I forgot the function name, right? So and so your key functions to um, PHP functions um, start running date and you know it gives you some some hinting as to what what your variables are in the function and then it'll let you complete complete that um, so that's that's just code completion that's kind of what you want in an, in any editor. Um, so let me go over to PHP Storm. Okay, this is a this is a WordPress site right here. This is just kind of a test WordPress site. Let me see. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I got this plugin, which is just an example plugin. Do something plugin. Do something plugin. Um, that I'm going to show you. So, in both um, Zen Studio and Peach, uh, P Storm, you can add um, depending on what your what your framework is. Um, Zen framework, in this case, um, you can include those those PHP libraries. So, um, and just like WordPress, WordPress WordPress libraries can be included with PHP Storm. So I've got this, let's say, I've got this sort of incomplete plugin here. And I'm just gonna, this is just adding a, a settings menu, simple settings menu. So as soon as I start typing, you know, it, it's gonna help me complete what I'm doing. Menu page, so when I go down, right there, isn't it? Yep. Okay, so that's what I mean by, by extending, um, including a framework library within an IDE. Um, if you just sort of out of the box um, start your IDE, you probably won't come with work, the WordPress library, the core library. So, so, so when you start typing a hook, an action hook or a filter hook, it won't know what you're doing because it doesn't have that library loaded. Uh, in this case, it's really, um, really pretty strong, this too. As soon as I start typing, I just put a quote up and it says page title. It's going to tell me exactly what to do. Um, so, do something. Oops. Is that because you set the base of your project equal to the WordPress install? That has all the WordPress functions? Actually, it's, 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 under, uh, it's under preferences in... Uh, oh. So you just you go to preferences, and I and I forgot where exactly it is in here. And I'm not a I'm not a big PHP store guy, but when I installed it, you go to preferences and plugins, got it. and then you just um, it doesn't strangely enough. Um, and this is just the 30 day trial here, um, so you can get the 30 day trial of PHP store without uh, committing to whatever it is the 160 bucks it costs. I think it's somewhere around there. Um, so when you get it out of the box, it doesn't actually have the WordPress library in there. So you have to kind of go and just include it. It takes two seconds to do, though. Um, let's see. And then my next menu tile. Sorry about the display. 
Let's see if I can get this over so. Okay, so. So you can see how it, it's going to build your array for you. Um, capability and give you little hints as you go along. Um, so manage options, like that. Excuse the spelling. So as soon as I start typing this, it should say, should. I don't know if it knows here or not. My plug in displays. Same page. Let's see. should be, there we go. So it'll actually help you build everything. And then, of course, there's the little syntax here, checking down there. And then down here, it'll actually help you to build your hook, too. So that's just a... So it's just writing it all for me, basically. And this should be, should come up. There it is. It knows exactly which function I need. So. If I don't have any errors, should, uh, there it is. There's my do phone. There's my, doesn't really do anything, but, uh, so. Hmm. So that's just an example of uh, how useful auto-completion can be and how it can uh, be specific to whatever framework you're looking at. What, uh, what kind of time do I have right now? Time? Four minutes. Four minutes left? Yep. Okay. So, well, the other two things I was going to go over were refactoring and, and uh, the tools of refactoring. I'm not going to go over that. I'm not going to have time because I want to get to, uh, to uh, version control. Um, so, a good, and then the other part is debugging, which, um, you know, um, let's see. Let me see if I can just get the debugger started. I'm going to go over basically. So, and we have uh, 10 minutes between sessions. So we have okay. To okay. Um, so if I go back to this and go to, let's see, where is my draw control? So. Why action? Okay. So, um, there's there's a there's a breakpoint there. I'm gonna set another breakpoint here. Just show you how the debugger works um, for me. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have used the debugger to go through time. Um, there we go.
Okay. I'm going to create a new draw application. This is our uh, site. Um, right here, before I do this, I've got a little tool to set this. So when I go, the debugger will be started. And now I'm in the debugger perspective. Um, so, say, customer, and so this is, you know, this is just the basics of debugging your program when you have something that uh, is, is out of control in your program and you don't know where it's breaking. Um, here's the data array for the customer, so you can see your customer variables as you go along. I don't have it set up to do anything specific, so, but usually in a loop in places like that. So did Zen Studio, is this like running Apache modules that support debugging? It is actually running Zen Debugger, which is, is an Apache module. Yeah. Oh. So you can, you, you know, I've heard that you can set it up with uh, Zbug or the, the other one, Xbug, but Zen Debugger is the one that works with Zen Studio. So, yeah, you have to have that installed as an Apache module in order for it to work. But it's usually, it usually is enabled, I believe, when you install Apache. Um, it's sometimes it's sometimes hard to get the especially if you have a large code base to get the debugger to work um, because there's a lot of dependencies on libraries um, but this one is working okay um, okay so now I'm going to jump right to um, goodness, good. um, I'm going to jump right into um, version control. So version control, also known as, known as revision control or source control, is the management of changes to documents, computer programs, large websites, and other co collection of information. It allows you to store metadata. It allows you to collaborate with other people, other programmers. Um, there's a checkout check-in process that's, that basically means you're not going to step over code that someone else is working on. That's kind of version control in a nutshell. But um, IDEs are, are pretty much um, are, have those functionality where you can bring the functionality in uh, um, some popular version control programs or subversion. Um, Git, Git is a big version control right now. Uh, CVS, I guess, is one. Um, Mercurial. Um, and then the Windows people use something, something entirely different. I don't know what they use. TFS. TFS, yeah. Team, what is it? Team something? Team Foundation Server. Right. Um, so, I don't know, just out of curiosity, how many of you guys do, do version control at command line? Okay, so you're kind of familiar with this sort of thing. I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and buy, which is just my favorite program. Okay. So, just going to make a change. Um, okay, so I changed that file. Right click. Okay. Then I'm going to um, get at get add, right? That's what you guys do. Uh, that was clean. Um, and I'm going to commit. And then uh, needs more comments. This is not a good comment. Uh, so then when I, so that's, I just committed it, right? So if I go back to my, if I go to my Zen program here, See. I've already got that signaled in my uh, Zen Studio as a commit that needs to be pushed up. Okay, um, the process. So you can do all that process here under Team. I'm just going to push this upstream. You have to cut you off for two more minutes. Okay. Almost done. That's it. Oh, it's still running in the background. Okay. So there it is. Push it up to my carcass tag. Um, but the same, 
the process is the same. Basically, you know, if I had something commit, I'd go to team, um, commit, and then I, there's nothing to commit, but then you put your comment in and push it up. Um, the other thing that's nice about an IDE, so this is, uh, let's see. History. So basically, um, all your commits and changes, anybody else who's worked on the project, um, basically they all appear here. And you can actually go and uh, compare with previous, say, pre previous versions. So you can actually look at what changed. Um, you can revert um, to a previous version, um, that sort of thing. Um, so there are all kinds of tools in, in Zen Studio for managing Git and just doing everything in Zen Studio um, when it comes to version control. Let's go there. Okay. Any questions? Is that your speaker? If you have Sorry, my morning. <laughs> Any questions? Um, have you used Cloud9, or do you know about those kind of post disk IDEs? I haven't used Cloud9, no. Or do you use it? Um, I used it for a, an online course, and I, I thought it was neat, but that's about it. Right. Um, remote hosted IDE that was in the browser. Yeah, I know. So how much did that go for?